We are inside one of the most extraordinary spaces in Singapore. A hundred and fifty meters below ground, carved out of solid granite beneath the seabed. This is the Jurong Rock Caverns, or JRC, Southeast Asia's first underground oil storage facility. A hidden world built to keep Singapore's industries alive. Off Singapore's southern coast lies Jurong Island. It didn't always look like this. In the 1990s, it was created through one of Singapore's most ambitious land reclamation projects. From refineries to petrochemical plants, more than a hundred global companies operate here today, making the island one of the world's leading energy and chemicals hubs. And it's here where Singapore made a bold decision. Let's uh, start to check our hydrant pipes to see whether it's leaking, as well as the hose. To dig deep below this island and build Jurong Rock Caverns. Okay. The top, okay? The top. Angry. Angry. Brian is part of the team that turned that vision into reality. It is Singapore's deepest underground infrastructure public works projects. It is equivalent to 54-storey building or the height of Pyramid of Giza, but underground. The facilities has four large caverns and one smaller caverns with storage capacity of 1.47 million meter cube of liquid hydrocarbons, equivalent to 600 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Building storage this deep underground isn't just about scale, it's about space. As Singapore's total land surface area is only 716 square kilometre, we are constrained with the limited surface land availability. These oils are normally stored above ground large tanks, which occupies a significant surface area. By locating JRC 130 metres beneath the seabed, we are making use of the space otherwise unused to optimise the land use without affecting the existing developments of Jurong Island. But storing oil underground isn't as simple as digging a hole in the rock. The first step was to blast through solid granite. That's where Professor Wu comes in. He's a rock science expert, brought in from the very beginning to make sure the caverns could be dug safely. We collect the rock samples from the cavern level and we put the rock in the lab to do the testing. And during the test, we crush the rock and we want to know is the rock still strong enough after the blasting work. We found that even after the damage, the rock is still stable enough because the rock was supported by the surroundings. The rocks in the area may have passed the strength test but for an underground cavern beneath the sea, the real challenge was keeping water out. Fractures in the rock create hidden pathways where water could seep through. If you look at this piece of rock, you can see the rock is very strong and dense. So seawater may not be able to seep into the rock matrix, but seawater can flow into the fractures. To stop that, Engineers mapped the water paths, then sealed the fractures with cement paste. But the goal wasn't to stop water seepage completely. We want to have some water flow in the fracture system to make sure the rock is fully saturated, then the oil can be fully confined inside the cavern without leakage but we don't want to have too much water flow into the cavern to occupy the space for oil storage. 
Solving those challenges took years of testing and persistence. And for Professor Wu, the experience of working underground left a lasting impression. After my journey with GRC, I found working on rock mechanics and the underground construction is very amazing. The reason is because for underground, you will never see anything. You have to dig into the ground, then you will find a solution to solve the problems. Jurong Rock Caverns pushed the limits of rock science and underground engineering. From concept to completion, it took 15 years, and the challenge didn't end there. Keeping the caverns running day after day is just as demanding. Yeah, I think it's uh, doable. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. That's Alan's job. As the project manager, he knows the system inside out, from the ships above ground to the caverns deep below. And it all begins here, at the jetty. So the jetty is the first part where we come into contact with the vessel. Once the vessel has birthed successfully at the jetty, we will then proceed to connect our pipelines with the jetty and to line up the pipes and the valves to get ready to receive the oil coming from the vessel. This oil is transferred straight from the ship into pipelines on the jetty and then pumped underground into the caverns through a valve manifold area. This is like an interchange of pipelines where we are able to direct the hydrocarbon into the respective caverns. The caverns have been sealed since construction ended, each one now filled with liquid hydrocarbons. The only access is through the operations tunnel, located right above the caverns. So the operations tunnel serves as a main artery where we install our equipment which is serving the respective caverns. And this is the only location where we can enter to carry out maintenance work and inspections. Yeah, over. So, yeah. we also arrange for the staff holders staff the Here, Alan and his team carry out regular checks on pumps and pipelines that are responsible for carrying oil in and out of the caverns. Yeah, it's all just because we just they are identify some pollution, but so they mark it as this oh. are all mainly for the marking of the pollution. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And being this deep underground, safety is just as important as keeping the oil flowing. Even a small leak from a valve or pipeline could release hydrocarbon vapours into the tunnel. So maintenance teams regularly scan for gas leaks to make sure the air stays safe to breathe and the risk of fire is kept under control. In the operations tunnel, maintenance is hands-on. Above ground is where the whole system comes together in the control centre. Up on tree six now. A hub that keeps watch over the caverns 24-7 and where every valve and pipeline is tracked in real time. Okay, so this is the flow rate, right? Yeah, okay. we are going about 5,008 now. Okay, 5,008. After how long will they take to complete? The... Uh, this parcel looking at about 1930. 1930. Hours. Okay. Yeah. okay, it's quite, quite soon. Soon, soon. Yeah. At the moment, we are facilitating a discharge operation request from a vessel at the jetty and it's being discharged into the cabins. So we are monitoring the flow rate and the pressure just to make sure all these conditions are operating within the operating range and safe. From the jetty to the caverns deep below, it takes a team working around the clock to keep this engineering marvel running every day. But its true significance lies beyond what we see. Jurong Rock Cavern has helped us to gain intensive engineering knowledge, safety management and operation and maintenance capabilities. 
So JRC is not just about a storage cavern. It is a blueprint for us to plan the next underground infrastructure solutions. What if the future of Singapore isn't above ground, but below it? 150 metres under Jurong Island, the rock caverns show what's possible when big ideas meet bold engineering. By turning solid granite into storage and constraints into possibilities. A hidden world today and a model for the city of tomorrow.